to be about rebellion. It's about the actual love of crap. Hi, welcome back to Four on the Floor. Our next topic, Led Zeppelin. A whole lot of love, or does the song remain the same? They redefined rock and roll. Heavy, raw, and raunchy. Led Zeppelin gave us Jimmy Page's blazing guitar, Robert Plant's banshee-like vocals, John Paul Jones's booming bass, and the thundering drums of John Bonham. We were everything, really. We, 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 we touched so many different areas of, uh, of just the normal sort of the blues and, and rock and, 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 uh, and, and the acoustic, but then we also went into other areas as well. From the bluesy strains of Hold On Love to the mystical rhythms of Kashmir, Zeppelin embraced musical styles from all over the world. It's all hippie stuff. Let's do away with the hippies once and for all. <laughs> big hair metal bands of the 80s to the alternative rockers of today, Zeppelin's impact is obvious. But are these bands paying tribute, like on the newly released Encomium? Linda, our singer, I think she, she can really like cop the whole uh, Robert Plant vibe pretty well <laughs> for a chick. Or ripping off a classic sound in hopes of cashing in. <laughs> about Stairway to Heaven, the most requested, most played track on radio. Can fans stand to hear it one more time? Atlantic Records thinks so. They're releasing Stairways to Heaven, a compilation of 12 new arrangements of the classic tune. When I talk to people on the street who are raving about Led Zeppelin, they don't just talk about what you hear every day. Who wants to hear Stairway to Heaven every day when you've got Kashmir in the light? Now, 15 years since the band's demise, Page and Plant are on tour, putting Led Zeppelin back in the spotlight. So are Page and Plant venturing into uncharted musical territory? I don't want to hear Led Zeppelin unplug. Plug their ass in. Or is this just classic Zepp rehashed for the 90s? Okay, J.D., a quick rundown on the dynamics of this reappreciation of Led Zeppelin. Well, it's really funny. In the 70s, up until about the time of punk rock, Led Zeppelin was literally the biggest band in the world. And then with punk, when things changed, I mean, Zeppelin got the, was, like, put in with everybody, all the other big dinosaur bands like uh, Pink Floyd and The Queen and so forth and so on, and they suddenly were no longer considered hip, and they didn't really ch change too much. They put out one record before John Bonham died, and then they stopped, ceased existing. So through the early 80s, it was not a hip thing to like Led Zeppelin. And about uh, 1983, 84, you started having uh, some alternative rockers saying, yes, Led Zeppelin is cool. I think one of the, f uh, Let's Act It was one of the first bands to really come out and say, yes, we grew up on Led Zeppelin, this is great music. Uh, then when the Beastie Boys sampled Led Zeppelin stuff onto their album, it, it added another layer of cool. And um, by the end of the decade, Led Zeppelin were once again considered to be gods. Everybody was waiting for Page and Plant to get back together A again. similar dynamic to the Carpenters, are you suggesting? No, a completely different <laughs> dynamic. They completely can never different. get back together. I understand. <laughs> I mean, what, but there is a difference. We have Page and Plant out on the road, but and they're touring and they're successful, but it's not the same, you know, it's not the same, is it, Chris? Certainly not. I mean, it's many years later, and I'm sure there's a lot of different stuff going through their heads. The people that they're playing for are different, and, and, and they don't have John Bonham and John Paul Jones with them, most importantly. Were you influenced by the by the band? Did you like Led Zeppelin? Heavily, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm in a I'm in a you know a quartet with a you know empty-handed frontman. So I mean, it's like Mick <laughs> Jagger. It's really hard to get past Robert Plant as a singer in an electric rock and roll band. And um, yeah, when we were putting the band together, I, in particular, I went back to Led Zeppelin and just started listening to to Robert Plant specifically, just to see like, you know, I was like, God, these guys are really loud. It's, it's how do I sing over them? I mean, that's a, just a classic problem. It's eerie how singer. influential he's been, though. I oh, saw yeah. the Rolling Stones live, and I walked out of the show thinking that that was who Axl Rose wanted to be, Mick Jagger. But he really wants Robert Plant is the like the like god of all that the hair and bulge and hair screaming and, bulge, yeah. <laughs> and screaming. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I never saw Led Zeppelin 
um, you know, I grew up, I mean, they were, yeah, really, they were the band. I mean, everything you like about rock and roll, everything you hated about rock and roll, they were the band. They were the soundtrack to everything. And, you know, I mean, you know, my mother would not let me go see Led Zeppelin. I mean, it was, those shows were wild back in the 70s. And, and that was the reason when I got into punk rock, why we hated Led Zeppelin so much, because they were so excessive. And because, to their credit now, you could say they refused to change. I mean, the Stones were hateable, but they sort of mutated with the times. They did a disco song. They tried to tone it down. Led Zeppelin was like, no, I mean, Robert Plant looks, except for obvious facial wear and tear, it looks basically the same as he did in but, the 60s. But you know, you know what's interesting is, is they refused to change in some respects, but in other respects they were always changing. I mean, Led Zeppelin was a band that did not have a sound. I mean, they were them. They had a personality, but they did not have a sound. And that's really probably the, the greatest injustice that's done to this band is, is call them the forerunners of heavy metal. They were not the forerunners of heavy metal. They were not a heavy metal band. so much more. And Robert Plant is so much more than a screamer, too. I mean, he's a great blues singer. And they were so dynamic. They had really soft songs and really heavy songs. And you know, the thing is, is that in Plant singing, he's somebody who can actually take sort of a mini history of American popular music because he draws from the blues, he draws from Celtic folk music, yeah. he draws from music outside of the Americas and Europe, and he puts it all together in one sound, which is literally what rock and roll has done as a process and over the last 40 years. And he did it in that way where he didn't appear to be aping, which a mm -hmm. lot of British singers right. always so came up with that true. sort of, you know, I always found it very interesting when I was growing up that, that a lot of the black kids I know really hated the Rolling Stones, but they all loved Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and I think because they, there was... Not this it, one. Well, yeah, some of the black kids, <laughs> I didn't speak, I don't speak for everyone. <laughs> but I'm saying that you never got the feeling with Led Zeppelin that they were that they were imitating. But you know they always got slammed for that. In fact, uh, right. their, they, their early reviews in Rolling Stone um, by John Mendelssohn in particular just reamed them inside not for ripping off old blues licks and for not giving credit to the blues people well, that they were thinking. Well, what about Jimmy Page? What did he bring to the party? I mean, he changed. What did he, he, what did he, he brought, Satan. <laughs> he brought Satan to the party. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I, I hate to be Mr. Co Mr. The correcting misconceptions here, but the other, I mean, they actually, everyone uh, makes that devil Led Zeppelin thing, but uh, people forget Led Zeppelin actually did gospel songs. Right. I mean, nobody's fault but mine is a song about if I don't read the Bible and I don't, don't don't live a good life and I don't go to heaven, it's nobody's fault but mine. Can Blind Willie Johnson recorded originally and Led Zeppelin did a killer version. Can I just ask, Chris, let's go around. Chris, what's your favorite Led Zeppelin album? Favorite Led Zeppelin album, um, Houses of the Holy. Oh, I love that album. JD. Sure. I'd have to say the third album. I love the acoustic stuff and it's just amazing. Scott? Well, I have to admit, on national television, I've never played a Led Zeppelin album from start to finish, so I don't have one. Um, I do, however, love Robert Plant's solo stuff. I discovered Robert Plant on MTV in the early 80s with the solo stuff and the Honey Tripper stuff he did, which I love. Amen. I have to say that outside of Whole Lot of Love and like Cashmere, I never knew the, the, the titles of any Led Zeppelin songs, so they all sort of became like, I never knew the titles, but the first album I ever bought with my own money was the second Led Zeppelin album. Is it the last album you ever bought with your own money, too? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. All right, when we come back, we're we're going to find out what's hot, what's not, and whatever's on these folks' minds. Stay with us. But that was last week that I bought the album. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked it. Great guitar player. I always have hated it.